Hello, um, welcome to the museum. I'm Andrew Bolton, um, the curator of the exhibition Superheroes, Fashion and Fantasy, and I'm delighted to introduce today's Sunday at the Met Symposium, which has been organized by Peter Coogan in conjunction with the exhibition. Uh, Peter approached me with the idea of holding a symposium on superhero costumes just after the exhibition opened, which was about six weeks ago, and I was thrilled with the idea Peter's work on superheroes, as well as that by Richard Reynolds and Scott Buchanan, inspired the conceptual framework for the exhibition. When I began writing or working on the exhibition, my first impulse was to focus on clothing that provided wearers with superhuman powers, clothing that quite literally transformed you into a superhero. But after reading Peter's, Scott's, and Richard's work, I switched my focus to exploring the symbolic and metaphoric associations between fashion and superheroes. On the surface, it might seem that fashion and superheroes have little in common, but they share surprising similarities. Both are reflections of the zeitgeist, mirrors to our social, political, and even sexual realities. And at the core of both are issues related to identity and transformation. Fashion and superheroes not only allow you to escape into your fantasies, but actually to act out your fantasies, to transform yourself into anyone and anything. They provide unlimited opportunities to remake and reshape the body. In the worlds of comics and fashion, the body is obsessively centered upon, and it's the body that provides the exhibition's organizing principle. When I was researching the exhibition, I was surprised to discover how little work had been done on the history of superhero costumes. So when Peter approached me with the idea of organizing a symposium solely devoted to the subject of superheroes, superhero costumes, I was delighted. Peter's efforts in putting together the exhibition can only be described as superheroic. In only six weeks, Peter has brought together a list of people who are at the forefront of superhero scholarship. In one way or another, all of today's speakers have been directly involved in the exhibition. Jeff Clark, Danny Fingero, Richard Reynolds, Stanford Carpenter, and Scott Buchanan inspired the conceptual framework of the exhibition. Paul Levitt, Michael Uslan, and John Cassidy extended their incredible expertise and knowledge. Adi Granov, Phil Saunders, and Gordon Smith lent their extraordinary creations to the exhibition and Alex Ross created many of the spectacular backdrops that you'll see in the exhibition. I'd like to thank all the speakers for their remarkable generosity. I'd also like to thank Shannon Price from the Museum's Costume Institute, Nancy Chilton from the Museum's Communications Department, and Joseph Lowe from the Museum's Education Department for their valiant support in organizing the exhibition. But today would not have been possible without Peter Coogan's vision and astonishing commitment. And before I hand the reins over to Peter, I'd like to spotlight some of Peter's incredible achievements. Peter gained his doctorate in American studies from Michigan State University with his dissertation, The Secret Origin of the Superhero, The Emergence of the Superhero Genre in America, from Daniel Boone to Batman, which he revised as a book in 2006. As well as his many articles, Peter is the co-editor of the Comic Art Studies newsletter, and the founder of the Comic Studies email service, which aims to coordinate communications about, about comic scholarship. He is also the founder of the Institute for Comic Studies, as well as the co-founder, co-chair, and co-organizer of the Comics Arts Conference, an academic conference that is held annually at the San Diego Comic Con. Please join me in welcoming Peter Coogan. Hi, um, happy to see everybody out here. And I just want to kind of get a read on the audience. Can we see uh, comic book fans? Uh, good, fashionistas? And uh, sort of regulars at the Met. Okay, good. Nice, a nice split. Um, okay, I'm just going to start right on my talk, E Pluribus Unitard, Notes Towards a Theory of Superhero Costuming. I, I developed this with some help from research assistants at Kent State University's Fashion School, uh, Chelsea Pasvan, Amy Kahn, uh, D'Artagnan Butcher, and a faculty member, Arcana 
meta. All right. Um, the first critique of the superhero costume came when Harry Donenfeld, the publisher of DC Comics, was shown the, the cover of Action Comics number one. And his critique was, ridiculous! And he banned Superman from the cover for five issues until sales convinced him that Superman was a seller and needed to be on there. So that's the first thought we have about superhero costumes. Um, superhero costumes announced the genre. As Cyclops says, superheroes wear costumes. It's the most identifiable element of the genre, and it's central to the genre. Um, I'm trying to draw from some other costume theories. Police, the police uniforms announce their role. Richard Johnson, in the psychological influence of police uniforms, said that clothing is a mental shortcut. You can identify the sex, status, group membership, legitimacy, authority, and occupation of the wearer by their clothing. And so clothing is an important to the initial development of social relationships of first impression. And an example of that is an experiment done by Dr. Leonard Vickman, where pedestrians were ordered to pick up a piece of paper, uh, give a dime to another person, or step back to a bus stop. And he had his assistants dressed as casual street clothing, in a milkman uniform, or in a gray police-style uniform, bearing a badge but lacking weapons. And the police-style uniform generated the highest rate of cooperation from citizens. And in terms of authority, Light colors are regarded as a little bit weak, but good and active, whereas dark colors are regarded as power and strength. And blue, especially, produces feelings of comfort and security. So very dark black police uniforms can be a little bit intimidating, a little bit scary, but when you split them between light and dark, you get the benefits of both the light sort of appeal and the dark authority. So it sends a double message. Superman's outfit is blue, which produces feelings of security and comfort, and red, which produces feelings of excitement and stimulation. Therefore, blue plus red equals safety and action. That sums up Superman's character. Captain Marvel, red, excitement and stimulation. White and yellow are coded as a little weak, but also good and active. And so this opens Captain Marvel up to a lighter approach than Superman. And gold, when he's actually covered gold, has associations with royalty and upper class class associations and a sort of sense of social control. So this costume reflects the way Captain Marvel is actually portrayed. Safety, he's going to rescue you, but also a little bit funner, a little more open to a comedic treatment. Um, Job applicants who wear dark business suits are perceived as more powerful and competent than ones wearing lighter business suits. And referees have been found to assess stiffer penalties against teams wearing black uniforms. Also, black is perceived as more aggressive, and athletes tend to be more aggressive in dark colors. And I remember in the 70s, the Oakland Raiders were regarded as a sort of assassination team. They were just really, really rough, and their costumes, right? Well. Batman. Dark colors elicit emotions of anger, hostility, dominance, and aggression. Batman. So his costume displays his character, and there he's balanced with Robin in red and green and yellow. So they work together in terms of the effect that they have. And Darwin Cook actually recently in a series called New Frontier dealt with that directly. Why does Batman have Robin running around? It's so that he doesn't scare kids when he's out fighting crime. And you can see this with the supervillain Black Adam. He has black and gold, right? Dominance, anger, hostility, aggression, but also that sense of royalty and privilege. His costume expresses his character. 